or a stag mango there are two parts to the answer one is the real story and one is the <laughs> pr story <laughs> the real story is that uh, both hasan and i we are obsessed with speed speed yeah. okay and we know that name acts as a huge roadblock we said two weeks if we only decide the name in two weeks that is it we started doing permutation combination um and then names of fruits vegetables his family lineage <laughs> my family lineage everything we put it down and we were doing just finding names that are available for dot com at the end we came with mango tag and like that was available and then tag mango was also available and that was the last day called a four five of my friends we said yeah let's final let's final real story not very exciting it's like yeah great the pr story now we have to sell a story around the name mm-hmm. always always yeah. always always it was an extremely well thought name wow <laughs> beta So tag <laughs> is actually it's a social media metric like Instagram tag etc. So that kind of is a representation of the internet. Okay. And mango is actually <laughs> a representation of the arm admi. Oh, the common man. So solving financial independence for the common man using the internet as an enabler. Dance <laughs> tag mango. That's the name. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lalit Dhanu Show. Today I have with me a very, 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 very special guest. Uh, now you might have seen our last few episodes, scale up. You might have seen new guests, and that's because of this man, Divyanshu. <laughs> so, Cheers, man. Uh, Divyanshu Dhamani, welcome to my show, and thank you for accepting my invitation. It was a pleasure. I was staying in the next room. <laughs> We could have done this any time. <laughs> man, nothing too formal here, but yeah. <laughs> Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me, <laughs> Divyanshu. I first saw y- you in a tag mango video. I've not been following you as you started your content creation journey. Uh, quickly on that, why did you start your content creation journey, and how was that journey? What did it give you? Hmm. Why did I start the content creation journey? So I think setting some background context. Which camera should I look into? That that <laughs> any camera, are... but you look at me. All yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Setting some uh, kind of background context. Um, I had started a social entrepreneurship venture called Wake Up Kid. Very original name, Wake Up Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds different, but yeah. Uh, while in college, in my second year of college, and uh, this was like a social entrepreneurship. We were trying to build a volunteering donation platform back then, and. Um, and because of that i we used to build a lot of social awareness videos on the same as well right um and one of those videos really picked up where i was just directly talking to a camera and i was just addressing a social awareness topic on the same and we got like 10 15000 views back then this was like a this is like third year of college in 2016 17 2017 this was i said this seems extremely interesting overall as uh, as a function and um and that particularly kind of led to me seeing the advent of social media first hand and i said that if i can just simply talk to the camera and this is a kind of distribution that can be created then it is also very interesting also which year was this if i may this ask? is 2017 2017 okay the real reason also was that i was applying um, for my mba programs deferred mba programs at harvard and stanford back then uh and i thought that hey if i create content then it will also help in profile building wow that was the real reason when i actually <laughs> got into content uh and i uploaded five six videos on facebook while in college third year of college itself and some of them did extremely well uh i didn't get through the deferred programs because it's fucking hard to get into those deferred programs it's like <laughs> and especially with a business background it's even more difficult um but then but then when i really saw the growth in terms of content i saw there is something extremely interesting happening here and then i studied trends in the western markets that okay content scaled up in a certain way and then with the distribution a bunch of businesses can be created upon uh, and that led me to starting and really doubling down upon my own journey and um this was like by end 2017 um i was getting invited to all top colleges of the country it wow. was like 3 months out of college <laughs> are you sure you want me here <laughs> i'm not sure if you want me here yeah. but as like why are they calling you <laughs> i'm like i don't know i remember my first 
speaking engagement was IIT Jodhpur. I was 21, 22. Wow. <laughs> I was I was traveling with my dad. I'm like, why have they called you? My dad's asking me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure why they've called me, but I'm glad they've called me. And then uh, then that is what it it kicked it off, man. And uh, that was like a quick journey, and then it kind of really scaled from there after that. I want to ask you a quick question about this IIT thing, right? Now, yeah. if an IIT college is actually calling another twenty-one or a twenty-two year old, yeah, that means they're placing their credibility factor over the video and the reach that you possess, rather than the experience that you have. Mm. Now, that also means the the credibility that is available there. Mm. Uh, so today, we see a lot of people go to colleges and address it. Do you think was it only because of that, or was it because of anything else? I think it was. lesser on the distribution more on the content oh wow so what kind of content were you making i was creating content around it was very inspirational motivational like entrepreneurship format content um that i was creating it was storytelling i was doing um and i was sharing unique insights from my life only okay um for example one of the videos i i remember wow it was a long <laughs> time ago remember it it touched like half a million views back then okay uh, on facebook Mm-hmm. and it was i was sharing my board exam story oh and how like i topped my school pre board examinations and okay. i was academically extremely strong okay. right and i was uh, in my mind destined to go to du uh go to an srcc or a st stephens but when my school board exam results did come out i did not even feature in the top 10 within my school okay i had like broken records in my pre boards i didn't even feature in the top 10 and now when i look back i know that there's everything happens for a reason and and you can only connect the dots looking backwards but it's um, it actually was a uh, very interesting i made that video and the the crux of that video was i give this entire story of this topping pre boards and not doing well in boards and i took it out the day board exam results came out oh smart and then i told what are some of the other things that i was able to achieve even if i didn't get into my dream college and I talk about things like falling in love, learning scuba diving, uh about adventure, about reading, about travel, um uh, about like learning new skills, all of that. And uh, that entire exposure that I was able to provide to my own self in terms of experiences um was what really added value to my life over right. the past 3 years in terms of my college etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So so that kind of was extremely like inspiring for people to even listen to. and that was the reason why colleges actually called me because it did touch a nerve when i and i get it why it did touch a nerve <laughs> yeah uh, ma- ma- make sense the vyanshu <laughs> I- and i know for a fact as you move on that journey of continuous learning uh, from being a student a content creator it eventually has to take you where you have to be and today you are we are sitting at the tag mango creator pad which i think is absolutely fucking beautiful thank you sir uh, uh, and i don't know uh, how much i've benefited from this because i'm yet to see all the reward that's about to come from this uh, specific place now can you tell us how did the idea of tag mango start or how did the problem of your business come into your mind how did you see that problem and how did you want to solve it and why the name tag mango got it so um solving the problem i was i was building content for like a year year and a half i'd built strong distribution i'd built a followership of like 200000 people on facebook um i had built another social platform called the soch network not a lot of people know it uh, that was like a content curation platform for positive content um and that got like 800000 followers on it cumulatively i had like 100 million views on the internet that i had clocked over a year year and a half and i did like a ton of keynotes across but the biggest challenge like recognition was great i was on the map in in my calcutta in my city of calcutta i'm really well known um but monetization was a core problem statement hmm. and i'm marwadi <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't match <laughs> correct correct <laughs> i was like i like wealth building i like value creation but wealth building for myself and for people around me that's something that really excites me and i said that and i saw this as a common problem statement across all my peer sets too in terms of the creator economy and uh, i i think extremely big so um so so something has to be really can be scaled into a really massive thing for me to truly get very very excited um and monetization was a huge roadblock right 
because how do i reinvest capital into even scaling up the content business that's there make the sense. different ideas make I, sense at pitch to in fact in content i had a talk show in 2018 wow wow called, what was it called it was called the dd show like a crazy promo i've done it all man i've done it all <laughs> and then i'm glad the entrepreneur side kind of came in but um, um it was like i got shirley setia ananya billa ashish was there sejal was there uh-huh. on the show back in 2018 wow so this is wow. history <laughs> historic <laughs> <laughs> and yeah man and um, and monetization i like great wow i've gotten all of that i have access i have recognition um, um but since that was the core statement i said let's let's think about how we can solve it and then call it life call it epiphanies call it destiny whatever it is i met with hasan um your partner my co-founder hasan and uh, um and we'd not met to discuss tag mango as the idea we'd met to actually discuss a third idea me my own cousin and hasan and then i told him that hey this is a cool way monetization is getting sorted for in the us for creators and that kind of led one thing led to the other we went through like a series of pivots reaching where tag mango is today um and the core focus is yes solving for monetization and building financial independence coming to your second question what is tag mango it's like i've answered it man uh, but um, like i usually give this answer there are i'll give you the full answer actually there are two parts to the answer one is the real story and one is the <laughs> pr story <laughs> there, are, there are two different pieces to it okay the real story is that uh, both hasan and i we are obsessed with speed speed yeah okay and we know that name acts as a huge roadblock okay. to get things done faster because people spend a lot of time on thinking about 100%. the name we said two weeks if we only decide the name in two weeks that is it okay nothing else is required. there's a deadline it's a deadline only the name nothing else we do uh we are good and the only caveat we had was that we wanted a dot com name we didn't want a dot in or a dot co dot in that's it makes sense and it could be a weird name like a not a weird like a random name like a zomato or something like that <laughs> which does not have any inherent meaning, meaning. attached with mm-hmm. it like great so so then we started we went on the journey on finding a name and we started doing permutation combination thanks to class 7 math um and then names of fruits vegetables his family lineage <laughs> my family lineage <laughs> everything we put it down and we were doing just finding names that are available for dot com because okay. nothing is available on dot com except your friend who's figured out shark tank india dot <laughs> <laughs> com <laughs> i don't know if you can put that but you can check with her after that <laughs> but uh but like uh, at that point of time and then we we had like a bunch of uh reiterations and at the end we came with mango tag and like that was available and then tag mango was also available and that was the last day to okay. decide okay. two weeks we've done nothing we found that was the last day to decide like tag mango.com available available and uh, i said hey it has a zing to it is it's fun it's like there's some some kind of movement to it so i called up four five of my friends we said yeah let's find it let's find it real story not very exciting <laughs> it's like yeah great cool good story the pr story now you have to sell a story around the name mm-hmm. always always yeah. always always So whenever someone asks me this question, my answer is it was an extremely well thought name. Wow, <laughs> beta! Hmm. The most well thought. We really kind of dived into <laughs> depths of philosophy to identify the name. <laughs> um, see, like I told you, like the core business model for us or the core mission for the company is to solve for financial independence for people around us, for the common man. So, and and we believe that the internet's an enabler for it. Okay. So I'm already sold. <laughs> you, yeah. So tag is actually it's a social media metric like Instagram tag etc. So that kind of is a representation of the internet. Okay. And mango is actually <laughs> a representation of the arm admi. Oh! The common man. So solving financial independence for the common man using the internet as an enabler. Damn. Tag mango. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name. Did this PR strategy come out when your spirits were high or something like that? <laughs> no, I'm extremely good at storytelling. 
सो वी आर ऑलवेज ऑन हाँ ये स्टोरी बना देते ये स्टोरी बना देते बट या दैट्स द स्टोरी इफ एनी वन आस्क यू टैग मैंग यू है सेकेंड स्टोरी लाइक एक्सट्रीमली वेल थॉट क्या सोचा है वाह सो यार दैट डैम डू डैम आई थिंक दिस इज दिस इज दिस इज अ गिफ्ट ऑफ क्रिएटिव पीपल एंड स्टोरी टेलर्स आई मीन यू जस्ट गिव देम अ सिचुएशन और समथिंग दे मेक समथिंग ब्यूटिफुल आउट ऑफ इट एंड आई फो शो थिंक दैट यू मेड समथिंग वेरी beautiful about <laughs> with that company name and that company uh, that's how you not find a name for your company <laughs> <laughs> or maybe us i don't know um what is the reason you started this tag mango creator pad B- because on the other side you're building a tech platform for creators to monetize but this place right which is so magical that we're sitting right now it has an aura of its own and every time i've asked you about it you only said it's a blessing and it's a blessing and i like the way you put it uh why did you start this what was the inspiration behind it so the thinking was actually very clear um hasan and i stayed in a place called launch house about a year ago launch house is a similar concept to ours uh they run residential cohorts for founders investors engineers builders all of that and uh, we were part of a creator economy cohort so we were staying in la during the second wave of uh, covid that had hit india and um, in the three weeks i met with a bunch of incredible founders investors all of them right and uh, at the end of the three weeks about 10 15 of us were staying together uh, at the end of the three weeks five of them invested into tag mango oh wow yeah that gave me incredible insight that offline interaction and if you're put up in the same space can really build depth of community like no other right and we already had an online community we had like 5 700 creators monetizing on a tech platform so since we already had an online community i said how do we build stronger moats around the business hmm. uh, how do we build a deeper community with the existing community that we already have uh, and we already had a head headway because the launch house folks had to build their network we already had existing network and offline spaces become a great way to market the brand as well um and this is something i like spoke to the launchers founder jacob directly and he told me this becomes a great way to market the brand he said we should definitely start something like this because we are trying to do something in the creator economy we recently raised around uh, and it's a unique way to uh, kind of uh, it's a unique go to market for the business so that was the thinking we came to bombay we said okay let's look for a house a villa um which is very fucking hard which is very fucking and we wanted juhu bandra andheri west those are the three <laughs> places we'd come to bombay and we just uh, a broker gave us only we have only four options <laughs> like okay if you have only four options kon banega crore ha bhala aur hai nahi option sir juhu bandra mein first place he takes us is a khandahar wala ghar sir is like शायद ठीक करके कुछ कर सकते हैं हम बोला इतना काम करना होगा इस घर में इट इज वाइल्ड इज नॉट हैपनिंग द नेक्स्ट टू प्लेस इज टेक्स अस इज सेवन स्टोरी बिल्डिंग सर आप ये बिल्डिंग ले लो टेक इन्वेस्टर से पैसा उठाकर आए हैं या बिल्डिंग अगर हम ले लेंगे तो हम वहाँ क्या बताएंगे कि बिल्डिंग ले लिया अपना सात तल्ला का बिल्डिंग हम लोग सोच रहे थे ये फ्लोर में ये हो सकता है ये फ्लोर में ये हो सकता है ये फ्लोर में ये हो सकता है <laughs> yes abhi <laughs> um and then this is the last property we saw of the four we landed here the moment i entered the door i knew this was it i have mm. a very strong sense of vibe um and that i can get i entered i went to the deck that's the first place i went to i saw there and knew this was it and then yeah that that led one thing led to the other and the creator pad became the creator pad and yeah it is truly a blessing man i swear and especially finding a location like this mm-hmm. which is in central juhu which is the most expensive real estate in india in india almost comparable to la prices on the beach with direct beach access next to prithvi theater prithvi theater is this, iconic it's the center i call it it's the center of and the representation of the old creator economy every top artist celebrity wow. has come from prithvi theater prithvi raj kapoor their entire kapoor family right which represents bollywood us being in the same lane literally 20 meters 30 meters from prithvi theater just tells us that it had to be 
it had and to. and we represent the new creator economy hmm. the next set of digital stars and celebrities that you wow. see will both create content here uh it will be a place of intellect and entertainment india's cultural hub that's what we want to build this into fuck and i'm sure it's go and i'm sure you're on the journey of making that happen and i'm so glad that i'm a part of this journey divyanshu and i'm i think this is you're just getting started yeah uh, the world is just getting to know tag mango you and the wonderful creator pad i remember i was at a stand up comedy show just uh, two days ago so sapan varma was opening the yeah. show uh, and then um, i was i was taking a video and he's like dude are you doing are you a content creator i'm like fuck yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like okay where you at he's like where you from where you at and then i told him that i'm a tag mango i didn't even tell him the creator pad oh he's like that property next to Ju- in juhu that creator pad all fancy you guys keep partying there every <laughs> he's making some jokes right but just the fact that people know about it and there was and like he pulled off a 5 minute set uh, you know <laughs> on, on the pad oh, and some damn, crazy shit find that out dude <laughs> man man divyanshu shifting gears of a little bit here uh, before we dive into the creator pad thing i think i want to ask you about you as an individual because we've known you as a content creator we've known you as one of the heads of the company but i want to know you in person and i'm sure a lot of people watching from my audience who come from you know the chennai kerala bangalore side of audience would sure. also want to know you i'm sure you've already built that but can you tell me what was that one situation you were in most doubt of yourself or i'll rephrase it one one moment where you had the highest amount set up yeah got it um so so this was i think back in 2018 only uh when i was in my content creation journey and built all that distribution channels um there was a six month period which was an actually really tough in 2018 right before we started with tag mango facebook in mid 2018 had killed its organic reach yes yeah remember so, that so i used to get 40k views in 2 hours then i didn't even get 2000 views in 2 hours that's why i talk tell creators to always cross distribute their audiences across different platforms if that's focused on one platform never be dependable on the platform um they don't think about you the big the big tech does not think about you even if you think they do so overnight your reach will drastically reduce and you'll have nothing to do uh, and i was like if i built this amazing community and i'm not able to do anything about it then that's incredibly bad and think i have to do something more about it and then monetization was also a question i was dabbling with so both those pieces one i i lost my distribution second i couldn't figure monetization um and i was like in a soup i was trying to figure out what next what next what else can i do what else can i do and um, uh, i come from um, a traditional family business um and i had i started i used to go to office along with my dad even back then what office if i may ask we are into the we are into the close standard marwadi business which is clothing clothing <laughs> we do hosiery man we've got a uh, couple of factories in calcutta um so standard hosiery business that we do i was going there and i was trying to figure uh stuff there for 4 5 months but that did not really provide me a lot of kick mm-hmm. it's great i mm-hmm. mean any form of entrepreneurship <coughs> is great whatever Correct. you're doing you're at the end of the day contributing towards nation building but uh, i like to build on like products that have really scalable impact in a shorter period of time Makes sense. that's something that gives me a kick as well and that's mostly associated with tech it's mostly associated with tech and disruptive technologies etc etc but like innovations is something clothing did not really excite me um and that was a period i know i used to go to office i was not at the top of my energy game and energy is big for me i have to be on top of my energy game um and that was like i remember till 6 months i was just trying to find out oh, what else can i do what else can i do what else can i do uh i'd started hosting my first set of public speaking workshops back then oh um i've done it all I'm telling you i've done it all uh <laughs> <laughs> and the public speaking workshops i used to host when i was 22 uh for all these younger students um in order to make cash with my distribution and uh, but i'll tell you something even in that self doubt there was this one song that i'm really a big big fan of 
Uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie The Greatest Showman. Have you seen that movie? Mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman? No, I haven't. So, there is a there is a song in that movie called A Million Dreams, okay. right? And uh, uh the the chorus of that song is that uh every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. They sing it well. I'm just <laughs> phrasing it, but um that song I used to re- listen to repeat a lot. Hmm. And yeah, that kind of really moved me. Even today in times of doubt, I just listen to that song. Nice. At times and uh it it just kind of kept me going and I trusted that something better is going to come, <coughs> something's better going something better is going to come and yeah, you just trust. I mean, makes a lot of sense and the the entire story that you told me I associate I associate that with self talk because uh, you know um I was attending this workshop and uh, one of the guys who is talking about self talk mastery says that every time you go through a hard situation the one thing you should learn how to do is rewire your brain to go sit in a place of uh, success or a place of happiness that means you have to rewire your brain to something that associates to happiness mm. right so like like you said you know every time you play that song it associates with that one moment you were in doubt and how you spoke to yourself yeah. and i think these moments are very important in For life sure. you have to go through it because it's a test of true character that's true yeah, that's man. true man i mean at the end of the day everyone who's successful um has seen the lowest of the low um that's i mean i've met with a ton of successful people globally Mm-hmm. and everyone has failure stories makes sense um and they figured out that's the only thing is <laughs> the only thing is not giving up giving that's up. the only thing no. thing else i mean it's very standard it's very cliche but that's actually but it the, works that's yeah. actually the only thing <laughs> it's cliche for a reason also yeah but yeah <laughs> life man yeah. it's fun speaking of people can you give me specific names who you call as your mentors and why or specific names that you really look up to whether you've met them or not and you still consider them your mentor i won't like um on my own circle but like i've got a few mentors across different categories and things i'd like to attack uh but i feel like almost on an everyday basis uh there's someone who acts as a mentor or not right yeah. um and i'm a big believer in like the universe being my mentor um and everything every conversation every incident everything that happens in my life i try to identify is there a learning that the universe is trying to give me here hmm that i can take from me um and when i just put myself into that mind space um the learning is incredible it's just incredible because you're able to objectively look at the incidences in your own life without being without looking at it emotionally makes sense um like from a third person's perspective from a third person's perspective and even in spirituality or meditation all of it kind of is that only correct being able to look at yourself from a third person's point of view and of course there are specific people that really inspire me in terms of one of them is with all his shenanigans but uh, but Elon Musk mm-hmm. for sure um <laughs> i mean i just respect the the ability to dream in such a wild way it, like i mean he's the true definition of wild think about flying to mars dude we are not talking about a country travel it's mars so like it's far. mars <laughs> it's mars um and dedicating your life to that singular mission and aligning all these different businesses making them profitable and self sustaining like spacex as a business is self sustaining and profitable i don't know if it's profitable or not but they churn cash they with do. a singular mission of reaching mars right and having all these businesses aligned towards that singular mission wow, wow that's something something incredible i would i'd love to do something with him down the road mm-hmm. even maybe do something in the space mm-hmm. um in the in the space worlds down the road as as a uh as i keep building things that's one of the things on my uh, goal post um but like elon musk is someone who who really inspires me and another person that really inspired me was barack obama um i mean it's 
right from school time i've seen him i've always been a public speaker i've always been a narrator i'm a, i feel i'm a man of the public um is although over the last 2 3 years i am a man of commerce <laughs> 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 but uh, like barack obama just the way he carries himself oh man and um everything he does it's just so inspiring <clears throat> to just look at from at least uh, a viewer's perspective Makes and sense. take inspirations and learnings overall so those are two people i think i'd highlight um overall and um i've uh, i've seen this one person very close up uh, radha krishnan damani because he's um, um he's he does kind of i've I met him at social gatherings as well but we're not related um and even though you carry the same surname even though even though we carry the same surname and uh, uh i did follow up with him to kind of reach out to him um through his secretary for like 3 to 4 months and uh, the amount of in like the only thing i learned from him even though he is double digit billion dollars in terms of worth he is the most humble person i've ever seen yeah. like i mean what 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 attribute or what was that one moment you said dude he is really humble like what was the defining moment the first time i met him um uh, the first time i met him and i told him like i'd gone to his office i'd gotten like a 15 minute slot to meet with him uh and this was after 3 4 months of following up please sir please sir <laughs> <laughs> after a lot of please sirs <laughs> i got that 15 minute off like and this is pre funded era for tag mango this is not that we've built something like really massive a young guy shifted to bombay first time in my life um and i told him that hey this is what we are doing and i was i was nervous i was like oh my god <laughs> i was like hey this is what we are doing uh this is our business this is our business model so he, he told me the first thing he told me that divyanshu to be honest i have no idea about what you do or about the tech world i'm like this guy is double digit billion dollars <laughs> <laughs> and uh he's one of the smartest men around uh and he, with so much of ease he's able to say that he doesn't know and we think we know we know yeah i i think it's the scale of power right like as you know very little you think you know a lot but as you know a lot you know you know very little mm. and that happens only through experience it happens like you sit in age like wine yeah uh, so yeah man go on tell me what has happened and i mean yeah and then um, that that conversation actually went extremely well the 15 minute meeting kind of extended to 25 minutes i was telling about the business and all of it and um and then i was i'm very curious i was asking questions ki uncle aap batao and i usually i'm good in befriending people i make it uncle bhaiya very soon <laughs> so, so that relationship <laughs> sure. builds and those are all cues man those are all um and from a good place with the right intent always things need to be done with the right intent and then i was asking questions and i asked him a very commonly asked question because there's not a lot of interviews that's available he's a very very private person uh and i asked him uh what's the uncle what do you say is the secret to success according to you i've okay. never seen any of your interviews nothing is on the internet so i'll ask you directly only so well, uh, he said that the vyans you don't put success on a pedestal it's not that tough if you diligently put in 10 12 14 hours of work on an everyday basis and you show up you will get success in whatever you do diligently 10 12 hours of work you have to put in that's it hmm. most of the times and what i i thought about it and i even tried to read through what he's trying to uh was trying to tell me a lot of the times i mean we say that we are working 9 to 7 right but are we truly working 9 to 7 are we truly making every single second uh, the best use of every single second that's been provided um and and functioning at the level we should be functioning so if we just optimize towards that and that comes to us time management and having a work life balance all of it we will be successful makes sense there is no doubt about it but a lot of times we become a little loose on it <laughs> and 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 like man incredible incredible man incredible man i'm sure and and i just want to just scheme through the couple of things he said the 9 to 7 job i personally feel usually people are not working but in their head they are right they feel i'm at a job what next so they're stuck between two decisions and that's where your brain space starts taking over by something unnecessary 
I think. And the second part is where, I mean, when you meet somebody like that, it really humbles you, isn't it? Like, oh, for dude, sure. Dude, you're like, you're like that speck of sand in that Juhu beach, right? You're fucking nobody and this man's done it all and he's telling you, like, just play the game, play the 10-hour game, 12-hour game every day and you'll get there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful moment. It is true, man. It does humble you for sure. Um, it tells you there's so much you don't know. Yeah. Uh, I remember I got out of his office, I gave my dad a call and I said, why, wow, no jack shit. <laughs> <laughs> like good good that you know that you don't know anything and uh, yeah man and uh, the, the first point that he said I've always realized there's a difference between being busy and being productive productive yeah yeah hell yeah it's a uh, thanks <laughs> it's a big difference man and uh, people like to think they're busy because I think being busy is cool hmm. but it is not Makes sense. It's not cool. Makes sense. I mean, yeah, you, I'm sure you have a ton of things to do. But if you're just more optimized with your own time, you will get all of it done uh, in a much more crunched period. And, and that also kind of skews relationships. Uh, it schools your personal well-being. People say, I don't have time for fitness because I'm so busy. And I tell them that if Barack Obama being the president of the United States did it every day, you can too. You can too. I am sure, sure you're not more busy than him. <laughs> I can give it to you in writing. You're not busier than him. For sure. And again, like it's about how you optimize your time, optimize your day and uh, what you set a priority to and all of that can be managed. Man, I'm sure. And, and Divyanshu, I must say, uh, you, you must have gotten this a lot, but even, even you as a person, right? Um, I, I honestly thought you'd be like one cocky ass brat like you know the day the first day I yeah, met you like yeah I, I, like, my specs <laughs> 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 you know but 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 it's it's so nice to see uh, somebody who could talk to you as if there is nothing right there is there is no element of success or uh, that's separating you and this can only come out of experience and time and you meet people who are way above you. So it's a funnel down, right? I don't even think I'm successful yet. Yeah? Yeah. That's what most successful people also say. Yeah. <laughs> and dude, I'm a big fan of stars. Mm -hmm. When I look up at the sky at night mm -hmm. and look at the stars gazillion years away, then I realize that I'm a nobody. Mm -hmm. So if I think myself of myself too much and take myself too seriously, Oh, fuck you, the Vyansh the money. You've paid so many cool things. You've traced so much money. Then I'm stupid. I'm the biggest fool on the planet, this planet Earth. That's all I can say. Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, so Vyansh, I remember the other day when we were sitting sitting towards the deck. I was asking you, uh, what in in your job or in your business, what is that one function or one role that is completely on you and you said you you were a people's man yeah, you, yeah. you are the person who who does networking now i want uh, a quick 30 second possible reel uh, on three tips from divyansh damani <laughs> to be an excellent networker because i have not only heard stories from you but sure. from people around right sure. like i've heard a lot of it so i want the world to know what does it take to network like divyansh damani <laughs> what does it take to network like um, the Vyanshu Damani? Three things. <laughs> it takes to network like the Vyanshu Damani. <laughs> um, the first and foremost important thing about networking is intent. Intent. Um, and what I mean by that is that, of course, at some point of time, uh, you, you are expecting that you would get value from the person. But it's just the willingness to connect with another human being uh, on a, both on a personal or a transactional level, whatever that is. But the willingness with the clean intent and the right intent that, hey, I'm not here to dupe that person or, or have any malicious activity that I want to create. That's extremely important. And intent comes through. Vibes matter. That's the most one most important thing. Um, second, in terms of networking, um, is is listening. Um, it's very important. People <laughs> usually, you should not, like what I do, and this is like a hack, uh, when you go and meet someone who's, let's say, who's done it all, or he's, who's a speaker at a conference, and you go and meet him, don't tell him what you do. Ah. Ask him a question. 
that will intrigue him okay for example let, let's role play that yeah. right now i just finished the keynote address yeah. what what question would you ask me i mean it could be around depends on the business depends on it depends on the setting for example i met with a top entrepreneur one of the leading startup entrepreneurs at a close intimate session uh, and i didn't expect him to be here be there what did i talk about i didn't talk about my business or anything i'm like yeah i do this this is me this is i'm the founder of this company that's it i wanted to ask you are you existential what is your definition of happy and we had that opportunity to have that conversation for 20 25 minutes but then he recommended books on philosophy to me um and he said you should read abc because i try to identify what is something that really connects with that person Fuck. and i can find a common ground on the same and then once you got in that foot into the door then you you built a stronger bond everything else is very transactional Transaction, superficial correct, it's correct. very and that is something you don't enjoy and third um uh prakhar told me this prakhar prakhar ke prakhar yeah. yeah. is very popular right now on the internet <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but prakhar told me this and it makes a lot of sense i don't give offense i don't take offense um i mean and um, to anyone if you've told me something i'll listen to it i'll not react to it uh and that's why because i'm surrounded by a circle of the creator economy uh i don't give offense i don't take offense that's something i think becomes a big part in terms of networking and building that relationship at scale with so many people Makes so sense. all of it yeah. awesome man i think those three were brilliant for me the most important part as a communication coach was the listening part yeah. and one of my mentors always says if you have to be a great communicator i think introverts are much much better than extroverts because you listen more than you you listen more than you actually speak and that's how you start building leadership skills trust and he always says you have two ears and one tongue mm-hmm. that means you got to listen to more than you speak for more. sure man so man uh, it just speaks volumes of what you're doing divyanshu thank you one more time for accepting this you are a very 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 kind man and it, it means a lot and i hope and i really hope to make the best of, out of this place and it's given me a massive massive boost to where i am at my career and uh, i just can't wait to see the fruit of this place no oh, thank you so much man really appreciate you calling me on the show as well uh, all the best with everything that you're planning to do mm-hmm. um, and if any way we can kind of support always happy to be there thank you man fantastic cheers brother, cheers, brother. take care